the news. Good evening. Constitutionalism, accountability and the dismantling of uh, patriarchy are among the five calls which uh, Chief Justice uh, Matilda Tumi has made to the judiciary on the last day of her tenure of office as Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Seychelles. Dr. Tumi was speaking during a ceremonial sitting which the judiciary organized this afternoon in her honor. The President, the Vice President and the Speaker of the National Assembly were amongst the guests at the ceremony. As of tomorrow, Dr. Tumi will remain in her office as a Judge of Appeal. Good news for the residents of Bessin Tan Pralin, the noise pollution problems linked to electricity production in the district should now be resolved following a project by the PUC costing about 80 million rupees. Those who live or have been in the vicinity of the Bessetan uh, PUC station have surely noticed it as it is much quieter now. Noise from the transformers uh, has been reduced by tens of decibels. Residents had been complaining of the noise for quite a number of years. The production manager at uh, PUC Pralin, Elvis uh, Frederic, explained that several tens of millions of rupees uh, has been invested by the corporation and he said he was uh, proud of the result. The Seychelles Energy Board has decided to maintain tariffs at current level for the fourth quarter of 2020. In a communique, the Energy Board says it has decided not to increase the electricity tariff for all sectors for the fourth quarter of 2020, despite an increase in the weighted average price of fuel purchased by the PUC, and that uh, the board has taken the decision in view of previous adjustments, the economic uh, feasibility of the electricity sector and in ensuring price stability, especially during this difficult period the country is going through as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. The next uh, review of the electricity tariff based on fuel price will be announced towards the end of December 2020. However, uh, the board will continue to monitor the trends and developments during the fourth quarter of this year. Vijay Patel, the owner of Vijay Construction Company, has donated more than 2.2 million rupees to various non-governmental organizations. Mr. Patel made uh, this uh, donation to 30 non-governmental organizations during a ceremony held at the Nayopi Conference Center. The donation was made on the occasion of his 75th birthday. He indicated that the funding came from his own personal bank account. Civil society organizations like the Wildlife Club Seychelles, Green Islands Foundation and the Seychelles Tennis Association each received 75,000 rupees. The funding will be used to implement small-scale projects to benefit the community. NGO work for the community. And if you want to do something for the community, then you have to choose people who are involved in the community. And that way, I'm able to reach the community much further than otherwise I would. If I do a project myself, then it will be only limited, which I do. But nothing like reaching more, and more is through the, the NGOs. The Principal Secretary for Tourism has said that the panel discussion on the theme Tourism Backed with Confidence has provided new ideas that could be considered to attract tourists back to Seychelles. The panel discussion was held yesterday at the Hilton La Brise at Bilom and was one of the last activities to mark the Tourism Festival this year. The Tourism Festival was held from the 27th to the 29th of September. The panel discussion saw the participation of the Minister for Tourism, as well as representatives from trade and commerce, the private sector, sets, health, hospitality and a freelance tour guide. 
The principal secretary for tourism, Anne La Fortune, said the theme "Tourism Back with Confidence" is searching during uh, is reaching sorry during the time of the COVID-19 pandemic. Most of our tourists come from European countries like France, UK, and these are on non-permitted lists because they have got very high risk. So we're not getting tourists coming in. So how do we allow the tourists to come in, but at the same time in a safe way? So this is what we've been looking at. So gradually we are moving step by step into recovering um, Seychelles and giving the confidence, giving confidence to the population that it's okay for tourists to come because we have put the measures in place to keep us safe. And for the tourists also to say, yes, I can come because Seychelles has guaranteed, guaranteed me that it's a safe place and if I do get sick, then I'll be well looked after. So giving confidence to the airlines, giving confidence to operators, giving confidence to tourists so that they are confident that when they come, they know where they're going and they know they're going to be safe. For the first time, Seychelles is having its publicly available information assessed to determine the level of transparency in the fisheries sector. Different stakeholders came together in a forum today to raise awareness of the importance of the assessment and of transparency in fisheries sector. The information will be assessed based on certain criteria established under the Fisheries Transparency Initiative, FITI. The executive director of the International Secretariat of uh, FITI, Sven uh, Biermann, says that the report will provide a status of availability, accessibility and credibility of basic information. The outcome of this assessment will be put together in a report that will be available by the end of the year. Transparency is a human right. You know, people have the right to know what is happening. But what we're also seeing more increasingly is that markets are demanding it. If you want to sell your product, you need to be clear about what are the circumstances on how you got the product, um, how you caught it, uh, etc. And we see this from a number of outside markets and players like supermarkets that are demanding to understand more how the sector is, is managed. Because if you constantly overfish, if you constantly take too much fish out of the ocean, there will not be any more business relationship in the, in the near future um, to work with. Without transparency in, in any sector, not only in fisheries, you don't understand whether the government who's entrusted with managing that particular sector is, is doing a good job. So the general public needs to have a wider understanding of how the sector is managed because it impacts all of the people living, living in the city house. Uh, we hope that in next year people are looking at the data and saying why are certain decisions made in that particular way? Why are we spending here? Why are we not getting more money here? Those are all important decisions and we would like to establish a culture of you know, discussions about these. Tomorrow, the 1st of October, is the International Day for Older Persons. In his message on this occasion, President Danny Faux says, as we celebrate this day, we need to take into consideration the difficulties that our elders are facing at the moment. He said that they are more vulnerable in the society, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. Mr. Faux said he's saddened at the fact that there are older persons who are being abused and those who are doing this are destroying the fabric of our society and weakening our nation. He ends his message by saying that we have to realize that it was the elderly who brought us up, who loved us and take care of us, and now it's our turn to return the favor because without them we would not be here today. And uh, in her message on this occasion, the Minister for Family Affairs, Mitzi Larue, has asked the younger generation to celebrate the existence of the elders and give them recognition, especially this year during the COVID-19 pandemic. Minister Larue said our elders have shown us how resilient they have been in the past when they have been faced with uh, other epidemics and pandemics and they have come out strong. The International Day of Older Persons is also an opportunity for us to highlight the important contributions that older people have made and continue to make to society and raise awareness on the issues and challenges of the ageing phenomenon which is uh, permeating in today's world. 
And with this, we end this news summary. Thank you for watching and have a pleasant evening.